part of my work is to ensure that SWIFT survive the human race. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when this civilization collapses, as civilizations always do, there will still be some SWIFT. <laughs> They're probably the first bird I ever really noticed. We were living in Southampton then. There were swifts in our street. I could lie uh, in my bed on summer evenings and hear and see them screaming outside and up and down the street. And they were so exciting and so unlike any other bird and so fast. And then they do things in the sky that other birds never do. I mean, they're all out screaming around in flocks like that. That was it, really. They, they, they just made a tremendous impression. How have you seen the kind of state of swift habitat and swift populations and things change over your lifetime? I mean, the British population has, I think, doubled since the Second World War. Yeah. There's been vast amount of rebuilding. Everything has changed and the accelerated use of new materials. I mean, new materials in buildings started becoming an issue in the 19th century. We were starting to create impermeable buildings. Buildings built before then had no damp courses. Uh, they were built of materials that very largely were hydroscopic and absorbed water. And so they needed a huge amount of ventilation through the eaves and through the roof. Now, those holes gave rise to nest places, homes for a huge range of creatures. As we moved into concrete and steel and mechanical ventilation and damp courses, and then into much more modern materials like sheet glass, mastics, plastics, rubbers, all sorts of compounds, everything changed. Buildings became impermeable. Domestic properties right up until the Second World War and even beyond could house swifts, swallows, house martins, um, sparrows, starlings, small creatures that could get into the lofts and eat gables gaps. But in very recent years, all that has gone. We're using different sorts of um, ventilation for roofs if we ventilate them naturally. So we have had population crashes of all those creatures. Um, there's pretty good statistics from the 1970s onwards, which indicate that Europe has lost half its wild birds. You can spot what's going wrong with the environment when the more sophisticated um, creatures with restricted ranges, restricted food plants, when they start dying off. You can spot how this works quite simply. Um, cuckoos are being um, satellite tracked on their migration to the Congo. And where they're stopping on their Italian route of their migration is only in nature reserves. And of course, now they're starting to die of starvation. As they migrate from Britain to the Congo, they're dying of starvation in Italy because there's not enough food anywhere on the route through Europe. Would you say it's more of a cultural systemic issue? Because obviously there are things like the swift brick or if perhaps people were to take over some farmland and reintroduce the type of crops that would support the caterpillar that those birds could eat? Or do you think it's something that needs to change culturally in terms of our attitudes towards nature? We need individuals who may appear insane eccentrics at first to the public to start off the arguments. We need individuals um, who start off with running their allotment or their piece of land in a better way as an example. We need then people who get together and publicists who can drive that. And we need action. We need intelligent, sophisticated action at very high levels of government. So we really need a, we really need to sort of look at the unintended consequences Sure. Everything we do, because we have an aim in sight, but we ignore what the side effects are. If you could give some advice, how could those who work in the built environment sector do more to protect SWIFTs in their day to day work? At the professional end, we find that ecologists, although always well-meaning, often are very vague about ident accurate identification of species. I've recognised 
various species and the ecologist working on the site has, has missed them or misidentified them. So there is a desperate need for better specialised training in wildlife identification for ecologists. Um, then there is um, the correct application of remedial technology, for example, bird bricks, swift bricks, that sort of thing. But we've seen some incredible developments where people have built entire walls in cast concrete for bird boxes. And there's no trees, there's no water, there's no food, and hardly any British species of birds will live next door to each other. They're all territorial. They yeah. don't want neighbours. They spend a lot of time getting rid of neighbours. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. It's supposed to be around for 50 million years, so you know, humans were about 300,000, so yeah, yeah, keep your I fingers think, crossed. I think swifts are definitely preferable. So. <laughs> In many ways. Yeah.